This month's photography theme is Jackrabbit June. And each of the last few weeks, I have given you quick tips on different aspects of photography. This is the last week of June, and I'm mixing it up. This week, I am answering your questions in Jackrabbit quick or rapid fire style. You won't hear a lot of explanation for my answers today, just straight answers to your questions. In fact, I got so many questions from you when I put out the call that I have to split the questions into two videos to keep this quick. Today is the first half of questions on my list. Next week will be the second half. The first question is from Tommy. He says, older Nikon D-type lenses on modern DSLRs, keep or upgrade? The quickest way to answer that question is by sharing a few lenses in my own collection the 24mm f1.8D, the 35mm f2D, the 50mm f1.8D, and the 105mm AF lens. Sean says, Tamron 18-200mm versus Canon 18-200mm. Is it worth saving money and getting the Tamron lens? Will I lose image quality? In short, you might, because the Tamron that I looked at is f6.3 at and near 200mm, and the Canon is f5.6. You may already be struggling to get an acceptable shutter speed at f5.6 on the Canon, so the narrower aperture at 200 millimeters with the Tamron, you would need to be in the brightest of conditions to shoot at 200 millimeters. There are other considerations with third-party lenses as well, and if you want to hear more about that, take a look at my video at the link above. Gary wants to know, best DJI drone for photography, Mavic, Spark, Phantom? Great question. I have to disqualify the Phantom from my answer because I haven't used it. And I have to disqualify the Spark because I have. Tried to use it, that is. More on that in another video soon. But that leaves us with the Mavic as my choice because I have used it extensively with great results every time. And it's easy to take with me anywhere I wanna go because of its size. Marco asks, how did you get started in photography? I have been into photography since I was a kid, but it wasn't until college that I really allowed myself to delve into art and later into photography. Simply put, it was something that I just always wanted to do, so I ended up buying a camera and I learned how to use it. Brian says, I have a DX and an FX Nikon DSLR. I have older non-CPU lenses that I use between them. When entering the lens in the menu, do I enter the same focal length in both cameras, or do I have to adjust for effective focal length for one? Good question, but use the focal length listed on the lens every time. Sebastian says, would you suggest a Nikon 55 to 200 or a 70 to 300 for a first telephoto lens, if either at all? Thank you, Lee. The short answer is neither. I would throw the 70 to 200 f4 into the mix. I like the 55 to 200. I use mine sometimes, even though that I also have the 70 to 200 f2.8 because it's lightweight and it does the job. Since I've purchased it though, the 70 to 200 f4 came out and I've heard that it is a great performer. It's more expensive than the lenses you've mentioned and not as compact, but it's still smaller, lighter, and less expensive than the 70 to 200 f2.8 and having the F4 throughout the range puts it head and shoulders above the 55 to 200 and the 70 to 300. Again, I haven't actually used the 70 to 200 F4, but if I were starting from scratch today, that's the lens that I would look at for telephoto. Austin says similar question here. I have a 55 to 300, but I'm looking to upgrade for bird slash nature photography. The autofocus is a bit slow on it. I'm looking for something that would pair well with my new D7500, any suggestions? Thanks. Well, I just talked about the 70 to 200 F4, but here are some bird and nature shots that I just captured a couple of weeks ago with the 70 to 200 F2.8. That's what I'm using and have been loving mine for over 10 years. Dawn says, what do you think of third-party lenses? I've reviewed a couple. You can see what I thought of them in the review videos at the link above. When you click that eye up there, you'll see another video in the list with my thoughts on third-party lenses in general. All of that being said, the lenses that live on my shelf all say either Nikon or Canon, or Lensbaby, but that little guy doesn't get much action. 
Not to say that you shouldn't get third-party lenses, but you should know the trade-offs before you buy. Bill asks, have you ever tried instant film? Sure. I haven't used Fuji's newer stuff, but I sure have shot some Polaroids over the years. None recently though. It's become scarce and expensive, and my Polaroid camera broke one day while it was ejecting a shot out the front. To me though, it is an extremely enjoyable form of the art. Reynald says, hello, Snapchick. I'm going on a trip soon to California. I have a Nikon D500. What three lenses would you bring with you? Well, it depends on where you're going and how you like to shoot. I just did most of a trip to Yellowstone with my trusty 24 to 70 and 70 to 70 to 200 lenses. They're heavier and larger than most of my lenses, but I never felt like I couldn't get the task at hand accomplished. I've gone to Yellowstone with kit lenses. I shared a video earlier this month where I talked about the process of choosing gear. You can see that at the link above. M Photoscapes asks, what would be your professional evaluation or opinion of what Nikon full frame DSLR to purchase? Semi-professional, genre, landscape to portrait. I primarily use the D810 for full frame I'd buy one again today. <laughs> that being said, the D500, which isn't full frame, is the best Nikon DSLR I've used from either format. Richard says, have you ever converted any cameras to infrared? No. Ooh, Mark says, I'm going to Yellowstone slash Grand Teton National Park. Is a 70 to 200 millimeter lens long enough? It worked for me. <laughs> it can never hurt to bring as much telephoto as you can afford either by purchase or rental to bring with you, just so that you can get just as close as possible without disrupting any of the critters. David is planning a river cruise in Europe next. What lenses would you take with you? I own a Nikon D500. Hmm, river cruise. Out on the water, towns floating by, the atmosphere, the people, the history. Sorry, what was that? Really, I can't even think about lenses while I'm thinking about the great trip. <laughs> you can, however, watch that same video that I suggested earlier about deciding on what gear to pack for vacation. Remember, it's at the link above. Vic asks, what is the lowest end lens that you love to use because of its limitations? Example, I love my ancient Holga lens. Uh, I love this old 18 to 55 pre-VR lens and these older primes that I showed you earlier, not because of any function limitations, but because they are limited in things like size and weight. And my last question that I'm going to answer today is from Art. What's the best SD card to use in the Nikon D810? Thanks, Snapcheck. I tend to use cards from the two biggest brands, SanDisk and Lexar. It's probably just superstition, but they're super inexpensive overall, and it's something that I don't want to have to think about. That is all for today, friends. Thank you for your questions. To those of you who didn't hear your questions answered today, check back next week. I will be answering all of them, I promise. There are more questions on gear, questions on inspiration, and even a question about cosplay. In the meantime, I will share a last Jackrabbit June photo shoot later this week and the story of my bear encounter at Yellowstone. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to see it all.